We'll move on very quickly. I'm going to show you. Oh yeah, wait. Where's the next one? Something else that I've done, for example. Oh, ah, I went too fast. I took too, too many. Uh, here's another kind of an interactive type of activity where the students have to label the graph based on um, what's going on in terms of the average number of IT call center tickets in Germany. Uh, I teach some IT guys who work in a call center, so uh, we did this to, to work out various vocabulary for them. Um, how do you like it go? Anyone want to try? I'm um, Colin. Yeah? I, I use this uh, whiteboard in the company, and my experience was that it, just using it, it feels kind of awkward. You know, it's not like writing the normal. It's my feeling that we used to. Do you remember the first time you used one of these on a flip chart? Yeah, I remember. And probably felt it was kind of awkward as well, and not really like writing on paper, and the pen was fat, and it wasn't really the same size as a normal pen that you have. It's the same with this. The first time I started using this as well, I felt it was awkward and uncomfortable. My wrist wasn't quite at the right angle. It's a matter of kind of getting used to it. Okay, right. Yeah, Pat? Mike, um, maybe some of us have got um, fears about the reliability of this. It's DIY. Yeah. So maybe there's a question mark in our minds. How, how reliable have you found it? Uh, I found once you get practice with it, I mean, it's 100% it's reliable once you get it up and running. Uh, the difficulty that I found was um, working out the angle that the camera is at. Um, the camera itself has a field of view of around 40% in this way, or 40, 40 degrees in that way, and around 30 degrees in that way. So you need to place the camera somewhere where it will be able to see all of the screen. Um, and in the beginning, um, yeah, you might not always get it right, but it's a question of practice. If you practice at home in your living room, if you've got any space, that is if you've got access to a projector. If you have access to a projector in a school, or in, in a company where you teach and the meeting room is empty for an hour before the lesson, go in an hour early, bring all the stuff with you and spend a bit of time playing around with it. So I'd say in terms of reliability, it's really reliable, but you just need to play around with it a little bit. Problems with kicking the cable or things like that can also <laughs> happen. Um, and, and you just need to know that once you calibrate the screen, the camera cannot move. So I gave this presentation uh, a while ago as well, and someone came in late and they wanted to sit here in spare seats, and they just got everybody moved it out of the way for me, and sat down again, and then moved it back, and of course it was in the wrong place. But you can just recalibrate it quickly. Um, we'll move on quickly. There are a few other things that I wanted to show you. Um, in terms of, uh, if you want to use it online, Still on my now this again is slow because I have a lot of different windows open and because my computer is a little bit slow. Um, we'll keep on the topic of presentations. This is another activity that I've done, uh, kind of warming my students to the concept of uh, planning and presentations and what's important to do, what's important to not do. Uh, this is from uh, goforenglish.com. It's a website where there's lots of free resources short videos, interactive activities, everything. And here's one for example, um, what's important when preparing a presentation or when giving a presentation? Here are uh, 12 different uh, topics or tips, bits of advice, and we've got you shouldn't do this, it depends, or you should. Does anyone want to give me a, a suggestion? What about Momo? You shouldn't go and look at it. So let's get the paintbrush and we'll bring it there. Oh, see now I've actually done that by accident. It's already on this. Let's go and enter. You shouldn't. We'll change the color of the brush. Wait a second. Oh, okay, this did work, work earlier on. There we go. Now I've colored my paintbrush orange. Or a kind of rusty color. So you shouldn't mumble. Um, yeah, you probably should question your audience. Anything else you shouldn't do? Sorry? Um, overload your slides. You shouldn't overload your slides. Okay, exactly. Would you like to give it a go? Okay, so you just need to click on the colors. So when you're holding on to this, 
You just need to be sure that the camera can see you. So you can do it like that, or you can do it like that. And then you just hold down the button, hold down the red. Yeah, whatever you like. So you're on, you shouldn't. Change the color first. Yeah, so you can bring your pen over there and click it. You can you can just click here and it depends. Yeah, which one will go for you? Yeah, which one will go for you? Yeah, and then click on that. Then you have changed your color to yellow. So now you can go over to tell a joke and click on that. There you go. So it's as easy as that. I mean, again, it probably feels a little bit awkward in your hand, but it's just a question of practice. Um, and getting an idea of how to hold the pen. Okay, thanks. So let's let's get rid of our smooth board, or not our smooth board, this particular activity. Um, another nice thing you can do, this again is another online website called Triptico, which has lots and lots and lots of games. Most of them are for free, some of them are not, but most of them are. This one's word magnets, which is great fun. Type or paste the text you wish to scramble in the box below and press the next button. So, I'll jump over here quickly. Would someone like to give me a text or tell me a text? Could you say something for me? Uh, let's say we're all having a great time today. Speak for yourself. And we love Gavin. <laughs> okay. Now, who wants to play the box? Yeah, well, so here we go. Now, this is, this is a great thing, this game of word magnets. It splits up my sentence for me, and now you can get your students up to the board to rearrange it for you. So, for example, we're, uh, we're all having, and so on, a great time. Oh. Time today in Stuttgart, and then with your students, you can color code the words. So you can also work on the sentence structure with them, or noun verb patterns, or things like that. So, for example, uh, let's color the verbs yellow. There's one. There's one. Uh, let's color preposition there, for example. And you can build up a huge text. You can have a text covering the whole page if you like, and then start identifying the different. Uh, yeah, parts of language to work on with the students. Let me see how we're doing for time. We have a few minutes left. Um, okay, let's shut that down. Something else you can do uh, is, for example, a lot of course book material these days. Come with CDs in the back of the course. Come on, course book. Oh, <laughs> You're fighting yourself with power. You're gonna make the thing even slower. I saw you got chance to say that. Oh no, make it slow. Excuse me. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. What I was gonna say was a lot of um, a lot of course books these days come with a CD.